To welcome everybody, Fosco Burrell, I'm the Public Works Director, Town Engineer with the Town of Marana, and assisting me with this presentation is Heidi Lashley, our CIP Division Manager. And again, this is going to be recording for purposes of us documenting this, and I will get into it a little bit more, but uh, I just want to let you know that this, so the purpose of this, and why are we, why are we pursuing this grant? As most of you know, we're here to, specifically we're pursuing a grant for what's called an RCE grant. It's a railroad crossing elimination. I'm not going to get into too much specifics because that's Heidi's portion. But it also dovetails into a bigger project that I'm pretty sure we're all aware of, which is the Cortero TI. So, as most of you know, the proximity of our railroad is very near I-10 in that area. And so if we're going to do a bridge that crosses the railroad, it needs to connect into the traffic interchange at that point. To do that, we need funds to plan it, to construct it, and you know to have that bridge come to fruition. I do want to let you know that we are still uh, a ways away from getting to that point, but we are doing these initial steps to, to hopefully get to that point sooner than later. Um, before I go any further, I did want to point out, as we're talking about these funds, some of the other participants here. So we do have a member from the RTA, the Regional Transportation Authority, Steve Huffman, in the back. Most of you saw him there. If you please get a chance, stop by and sign in. And also on that note, the town has its own sign-in sheet. If you have not done so, please make sure to do so before you leave. Again, that just helps document this meeting. And as part of pursuing this grant, doing these type of meetings will help bolster our, uh, you know, just bolster our grant and hopefully get us a little bit uh, you know, further improve our chances of being successful with that. So again, your role in this is to have feedback, um, have discussions. If you have questions, feel, please feel free to do so. At this point, I'm going to let Heidi step in and discuss the grant in a little more detail. Thank you, Fausto. So like Fausto had said, the first portion that we're going after is a fund for, it's called the Railroad Crossing Elimination Grant. So this grant helps us fund the bridge over the railroad, but also like Fausto said, we're also gonna to have to then fix our interchange in the, at the same time. So what this grant looks at, it's a federally funded grant. So it's the FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration. So pretty soon, any day now, it should be coming out where we're gonna be able to propose on this grant. So what they look for is to help enhance uh, railroad safety, improve health, eliminate at-grade crossings, and it's a very competitive grant. So this is something that hopefully we'll get it on our first shot, but sometimes it might take multiple times for us to go after this grant to get this funding. Um, it's very competitive, limited funding, and out any day now. Uh, this part, what we're doing now, which is public involvement, this is one of the key things. When we went through a boot camp for this grant, they had mentioned this pretty much every week that we were there, talking about getting out and talking to the public. So that's why we're here today, is to talk with you all about the Cortero Interchange Railroad, what you've seen near the railroad, um, and try and help put that into our grant. So the RCE grant prioritizes economic strength, equity, and sustainability as well. And then another portion of the grant is that we have to come up with 20% funds of the grant. So that's our match. So next, what's the problem with this interchange? As you know, it's an at grade crossing. So what comes into play? Rail crossing safety, whether it be congestion, air quality, because you're sitting there at the tracks. Are there times that you see a train that's sitting across there and the arms are down and it's just stopped on the railroad tracks? Uh, sometimes, you know, it's just east-west connectivity. Is some folks live on one side that are trying to get to their job and now they're stuck there for 15, 20 minutes at an at-grade crossing. Um, and the other thing are those that walk and ride their bicycles. Sidewalks and bike lanes don't exist today. So that's also going to be a part of what we're looking at enhancing at this interchange. So the Cortero traffic interchange, the part that, you know, after you go over the railroad, it'll be a lot like Ina probably, if you all can think about that. Uh, we'll be constructing a bridge over the railroad, which obviously is a reconstruction of the Cortero TI with I-10. 
uh, traffic impacts, there's going to be alternatives, but the good thing is that we have interchanges to the north and south that are nearby that will help facilitate connectivity throughout the area. Um, construction, as we know, lasts probably in the neighborhood of two years, um, but in the end it's going to be a great addition to the area. And we know that there's going to be a lot of businesses that are in this corridor that are going to be affected. So we're looking at getting ahead too with these public outreaches and talking to all the businesses and trying to help them through this process to navigate during construction. So, like I said, with under construction, there's going to be alternative routes. So you can see on the map here, the green dotted line there is Cortero Road. So you'll have an intersect or a interchange to the north, Twin Peaks, and one to the south, Anya Road. And then at least also to connect on either side will be Silver Bell as well as Thornydale Road to help you get kind of navigate the area while it's under construction. <laughs> I'm rolling with it. All right, so how will this project be funded? Like we had talked about, we have the Railroad Crossing Elimination Grant that we're going after. But the estimated cost in today's dollars is about $200 million to do this project. So in order to have a bridge over the railroad as well as the TI, that's the price tag that we're looking at. Currently, from the state, we received $10 million, which was earmarked to help jumpstart this project, which would be that 20% match that I was talking about before that the town needs to come up with. So the federal grant contribution, which is the railroad crossing elimination, which you'll see RCE a lot of the times, we're going to ask for $40 million to help start the process. So then with the $40 million plus our $10 million match that we have, our total project cost that we'll have so far will be $50 million to start this. Like Fausto had mentioned, the RTA next, um, we have that as one of our airmarked projects that we would like to see in it. <coughs> So with that project, um, RTA Next, if of course it passes, because this is a voter approved initiative, we're asking for $100 million to be put toward this project. So like I said, it's voter approved, so that's you all. And then we're also doing a survey because we need your input. We have a QR code that's gonna be back in the back if you wanna use your phone and take a picture and fill it out online, or if you go to the website here, moranaaz.gov slash cortero dash interchange, you can fill that out online. But if you need help with anything, you can ask one of us here and we can help you navigate that as well. So at this time, I'd like to open it up to any questions that anybody has. If I saw that right, you're going to make the uh, the road go over the railroad tracks? Correct. Wow. So you're going to come down Cortero. Is there enough room between I-10? Obviously, you know better than I, but it doesn't look to be enough room between I-10 and the tracks to bridge No, over. so it's going to bridge completely over the railroad and I-10. So I-10 will drop down and Ooh. you'll go Oh, over. okay. So It'll be continuous over. Yeah, one long bridge. It's like, yeah, there's a name for those. Uh, I know what you're talking about, the real tall the ones. Three. Pardon me? The other three interchanges, roof or off, and the others that they've I just have, done, yeah. they're all going to be the Twin same. Twin Peaks is kind of the same way like I got down you. here. I got you. What about the, the trillion dollars in infrastructure bill that passed? Is there, is there any money available in that? So yeah, I don't know if everybody had heard the question. Who was asking about the infrastructure bill? That is actually some funds that are that are part of these grants we are pursuing. I don't know if it's specifically tied to this. I believe it is, but there's us. We are continuously pursuing all avenues in regards to funding. So we are actively looking at that. And actually, Melissa has been great, and she's the one that helps us at the town to, to identify what funds are available out there. Yes, sir. So uh, you're estimating $200 million. That's, That's today's dollars, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And you're saying the federal grant contribution with the town is 50. RTA, you're hoping to get 100. Correct. That's 150. Correct. Where does the last 50 come in from? We are, go ahead. And if it stretches out, could this balloon to 250, 300 over time? Or when you're looking to begin construction? 
So those are still some open-ended questions, but we are, this is our number one ask in the RTA initiative, as Heidi mentioned. That, if successful, begins in fiscal year 27. So in a few years from now, because we are in the current RTA that wraps up in 26, our, our goal or our wish with this endeavor is to get to a point that we're ready to construct and if we're successful with the RTA and if the town is successful and also ADOT. I, I just want to point out this is ADOT infrastructure as well and we are partnering with them on this. But um, so if we are successful and we have that in the first time period, we'd like to be in a position to start construction once that time period opens up and becomes available. So that would be obviously in the first five, the, just in case you don't know, the RTA is broken up into four or five year periods. It's a 20 year initiative. So when I'm saying the first time period, I'm talking about the first five years. So if that begins in 27, we'd like to be in a good position to start construction as soon as possible. However, there's many variables in place, obviously, and funding is one of those variables. Um, sorry, ma'am, I believe you were next. Okay, I, I wanted to know what are the deadlines on these grants and when are they likely to let you know if they're funded or not? So uh, what Heidi was mentioning is called a NOFA, Noting on Funding Availability, Notice of Funding Availability, sorry. We have yet to even see that. So they have not opened up that part of the grant yet. So we don't have that information in front of us. We do have the information from last year's grant to use as a template. But again, that's just giving us a guide. We don't know 100%, but they have yet to open up the grant. So once that opens up, we're gonna submit. Correct, it was supposed to be September is when the NOFA was supposed to come out. That did not occur, and obviously we're talking about the federal level. As most of us are aware, they talk about potential shutdown, those type of things. Those all add a little bit of time to these type of projects or processes. Uh, sorry, sir, back here. Uh, let's see, you said this is a voter approved tax. Has it already been approved or it needs to be approved? So this is the RTA Next initiative, and that is something that they're looking at going in the ballot in the coming year. In, Yes. So, so it could be shot down? It could be shot down, correct. So again, that is a regional initiative. So we're looking at this is the Regional Transportation Authority for Pima County. So not only Marana, but ADOT, Pima County, Tucson, all of the other agencies within our region have some projects that are part of this initiative. And again, if it's successful, we have projects lined up. If not, then Obviously, we have some more funds that we need to identify. Yes, sir. I got a couple questions. One, who paid for the INA overpass? The INA TI was built with the first RTA. So the, what we're talking about here, the RTA next, I know was built as part of that initiative. And the second question is, uh, just looking at it, it looks like we're gonna have to lose uh, some buildings. Is that included in the 200 million buying out the businesses? Correct. That 200 million is based on, so when you look at these type of projects, some of them have what's called a design concept report. There was one done for the Cortero TI back in 2014. It did identify a cost at those times. And actually re uh, recently, Heidi just participated in another estimating project. We actually estimated based on the previous, uh, the, no the funding amounts in 2014 and grew those and they were actually very close to what they did and their estimate was just done in today's dollars and it all lands at about 200 million but yes right away acquisition buildings all of that was identified do you have any idea what buildings are going to need to be moved yet no not at this point that it's a very very high level design and there's still some potential tweaks to that that we've identified um, there's been improvements in uh, design and building type activities that we think we can minimize the impacts but yes there will be some Yes, ma'am. We currently have a half cent tax in Marana for the new community center. Is this an addition to that? This, so this is an addition to that. We're not talking about any initiative that we're doing, but yes. So you currently, there is an RTA that currently exists that has a half cent sales tax tied to that. This would be to extend that, if you will. It's, it's RTA two, but it's called RTA next. So, but this is a tax that's already on the books that we all pay currently. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Would the interstate be pulled over east to accommodate the uh, overpass? So currently, some of the preliminary designs we've seen have not had any shifting of the interstate. There would be a shifting of the overpass approximately 100 feet to the east or south, if you will, is some of the preliminary designs. 
That does take some of the tangent out, because some of you are familiar, Portero, I guess I can. So you can see the green line, but obviously Portero goes up and it angles over, and there, the concept does show that realigning bit. But that is not the interstate, that is actually Portero Roadway in the TI location. Yes, sir. So how long is it going to be before you end up coming back and asking for money for Tangerine to do the same thing? So Tangerine is our number two ask on the RTA next. Why aren't you putting that forward with this project so that they're both uh, already in the pipe? That is an excellent question. When Heidi mentioned that this is competitive, we're talking about 10, maybe 15 percent are actually successful at receiving these funds. So we're putting all of our eggs, if you will, in this basket, because also we're tying it to the RTA, which we have, Cortero is our number one. It takes a lot of process to get to the point where you're actually constructing. So our intent is to get into construction, hopefully in that first period, and we're hoping to get into the design elements and everything you have to do in advance to be able to build Tangerine going into the second period of the RTA. Well, with the building of all these distribution centers, why aren't uh, some of these folks uh, contributing to this process? It, it uh, helps their particular situation too. There are contributions that are occurring. However, those are tied through impact fees and some are tied to existing uh, agreements that are in place. However, a lot of those were set previously that you know, at this point, they're not tied to the actual traffic interchange at this point. And what we're doing right now with that Tangerine TI is we're looking at putting in some improvements that'll put it in the condition of what Cortero certainly currently sits at. Which is terrible. Which is terrible, but it does improve the situation from where it is right now. And that does extend the time frame to allow us to, to get to this point. But again, we're talking 200 million and Tangerine looks like it's coming in a little bit less because it doesn't have quite the same properties to contend with, but it's still near that price point. So we're dealing, we're talking about lots of funding that we're, we're trying to identify. Yes, ma'am. Um, right now, the St. Louis Arch Road, I know the mess. Mm -hmm. It is. And all these alternate things are a mess. Is there any way, for example, the minute they close Orange Grove, they decided to repave Ina. Can we look at those things before we close Cortero? And also, will we do Cortero after we close, after we open Orange Grove? So yes, Cortero, we are, we are at the very, very infant stages of this process, if you will. So the project that's currently underway between like the roof frost stretch right there is, South of Ina, that will be done within, it's a two year time frame, and I think we're two thirds of a year into it, or a little more, do you know, Dion? So, so yeah, we have about a year and a half left. We are several years out before Cortero's gonna be improved. Um, some of the processes that we did on Ina, that was actually a treatment process that we overlaid on the roadway. That was about a week's worth of, you know, a little bit of drawing pains, if you will, but, so those type of process, that was a minimal process. That is just something we had to do, and unfortunately we couldn't wait the two years because our payment degrades daily. So that's why that was done at that time frame. So that's not something you, we were able to, to do in that time. Yes, sir. Yeah, I would, uh, first I want to commend you because with Orange Grove being down, with Ida being down at some point, uh, I think you did a wonderful job in terms of overcoming some of the challenges. I had no problem going down Thorny Hill or using Silver Bell or uh, cutting down Tahina over to Thorny Hill. You could tell I go to Costco occasionally. Okay? <laughs> Once in a while. Uh, but how are you going to minimize uh, traffic issues and business interruption because you've got a ton of retail, you've got a library, you've got schools. Um, the north side of I-10 on Cortero continues to develop. I think there's a new motel or hotel going up there, it looks like. Yes. What are you going to do? What do you see as the alternative routes? So first, I want to thank you for the kudos and 
give a shout out to Dion and her team. And they partner obviously with our other agencies as they develop those traffic plans. And I know her team specifically, they spend a lot of time trying to tweak and optimize the signals in the area as best they can. Obviously, that's a lot of traffic in that area. So at a certain point, it will break down, but appreciate that. We are going to, I think Heidi mentioned it a little bit, when we get into the process, and that's one thing I wanna to mention too is, I apologize, I know these meetings you usually have exhibits, we show you all of this and what we're planning. We're just not at that stage yet. We're very, very far in front of that, but we will hopefully get to that stage in the near future and we will come back and show you some of those plans. As part of that process, we're gonna identify every way we can to minimize the impact of the business. I won't tell you that we won't have any because we will. This is a major connection point, but it's also one of those once it's done and improved, it's gonna greatly improve the situation out there. It's gonna enhance all of those businesses, but it is probably gonna take two years to get there. I don't wanna give you any ideas at this point because it's just brainstorming that we've had, but we wanna see if there's a way that we can at least keep connectivity to the interstate, even if one direction. So think of it as a big one way in, one way out type situation. However, as Heidi mentioned, we are in a lot better situation than when we did this before. Twin Peaks went in at a point where there was no really other issue because that was making that connection. Ina, as we all observed, was tough. We took Ina out of play and we really pushed traffic around. When we get to the point that we do this project, we're gonna have Twin Peaks to the north, we're gonna have Ina to the south, and we're also gonna have Orange Grove that's been improved at that point to the south, you know, to the next mile south. So we're gonna be in a lot better situation. We do have Thornydale, we do have Silver Bell that help you get around that area. So hopefully that'll help if somebody's on the east side of the interstate and they wanna to get to the Walmart or one of the other businesses, they're able to get there using another route that exists. Again, I'm not by any means telling you that there's no impacts, that it'll be easy, but there's a lot better alternatives than there were previously when we did some of these projects. Yes, sir. Can you uh, start? spending some of the pre already allocated money from the state and had in planning and, and moving ahead? So to answer your question, we could, but that 10 million doesn't stretch near as far as it used to. That 50 million is more of the money we need to start doing those elements that you just mentioned. So he asked if we could start spending money to get moved forward with some of the planning, the design. Really, we're, we're putting our best efforts in to achieve this grant which will help us start designing the overpass over the railroad, but also the TI, start doing some of the very initial things you have to do, which is the planning, which is the environmental, the archeological. So all of those elements we are going to pursue, but unfortunately 10 million won't get you as far as you would think. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another question? Or? Yes, sir. And I'm just gonna point out for the, the concerns about the uh, constructability, you should have a big, huge advantage on this project from Ina and uh, Twin Peaks and Ruth Roth because you will be building to the south. So a good portion of your, your bridge and construction, particularly on the east side, will be out of harm's way from the traffic. You'll be able to better manage your cross traffic yeah, by doing that to alleviate the, some of the fears about what happened at Ina Road in particular. Correct. Yeah, there's there's just a lot of other opportunities that we have, and also as we get into design, we're going to see what else that we have to to best mitigate the impacts. But again, there will be impacts, but we're going to do our best job to minimize those. Yes. I would like to just point out. I mean, as far as what I notice with roads and this and that, is they're not all, and I may be using the wrong word, but it's not all the same people that are in charge of them. So when you've got a lot, when you're talking about Silver Bell and Linda and Thornydale, a lot of that is Pima County and not Marana. So that comes, that, that's got to have some bearing on what gets done and doesn't as far as making it a better alternative route. Jurisdictions. That you have other jurisdictions to, to deal with. Correct, yeah. We, we do work with Pima County hand in hand and they do have some roadways that are jurisdiction blends into, and obviously we're talking about an interstate and the traffic interchange, which is an ADOT facility. Right. But it does impact the town greatly. All of our interchanges do, just the way that 
the interstate and the railroad bisected our community. So that's part of the reason why we're pursuing this, but thank you. Yes, sir. Does ADAP kick in on this? So that is a portion that you mentioned, the $50 million gap. ADOT does not currently have this project identified in their long-term plan or their relatively near-term, like within the next 10 years, it's not identified. However, we've been having lots of meetings with them. It's, we have a good relationship and they do understand that things are changing in Marana, that we're growing. And not only this interchange, I believe somebody asked about the Tangerine interchange. We've been, we've been having those discussions with them and so, Hopefully, as we move forward, this is going to be a partnership, and they might have some levers they can pull in regards to funding to help this go forward as well. But currently, it does not exist, and so they are kind of limited as far as having funding shown, so we don't have anything shown from ADOT at this point. Yes, sir. So uh, I hear there's a lot of possibilities, possibility of ADOT funding, possibility of a voters approving the tax, whatever. So we need all those levers to fall into place in order for this project to go. So uh, what are the, the real possibility that this thing happens? There is a real possibility that those initiatives don't take off and then we will have to pursue other avenues for funding. But that's why we're talking to you here and letting you know that the town is actively pursuing this. We are putting all of our efforts into pursuing this to obtain this RCE grant, which will cover the railroad portion of it, but there's a lot more tied to this. And one of them is the RTA initiative. And and so those are some of the things that we're coming to talk to you. But yes, I can't tell you right now, certainly we're gonna do this. We are actively pursuing funds to help us do this, but currently we don't have these funds at the town. We don't have this budget. So that is why we are having these meetings to talk with you. Are you Sorry, there was a question back here first. With the changes that they've done for TAN3, a lot of things have made it um, nicer with the way that getting on and off guard, but there's some serious hazards that are happening with the things going down and people going across and the plane, the train's coming way too fast. So there's some serious hazards there that I want to make sure they get pointed out. And with the the way that you have everything planned in this, there's there's a little kind of tier system that you have that there's a possibility if this one doesn't work, they can put it here, this one can go here, all depending on how the federal government might help out and how we can raise funds for all this. So I'm trying to commend you guys for what you have done, but just point out little uh, things that seem to be not getting to you guys because we're hearing a lot from people that have gone to and from that inner exchange, just like you hear all the things that have happened with Thornville, because we, we go down into the hospital a lot too. So all those little things are actually, um, I'm going to call them hiccups, so I'm just saying try to take a look at it, that's all. So appreciate your input, ma'am. Um, just so you know, we have not done any improvements yet to Tangerine. Those are still coming. Some of the improvements you see may be tied to, there's a gas station that was just built. And of course, there's a development there that's been doing some work. Our improvements will actually, we do call it the Cortero improvement internally. It's, we will do the abutment lanes on the other side of the columns, and we will actually widen the roadway, which will include improving those arms and upgrading that system to make it much safer at the railroad crossing to eliminate any type of movements across. It'll be similar to what you see at Cortero with the arms that close and, and negate the ability for traffic to go through. But I appreciate the input. Just understand we have yet to really make improvements at that at that interstate it's yet. It's not just that tangerine. It's the different things like Orange Grove and Ina and all the little things. There's still little things that are being negated and not seeing that they're happening somehow, or we're not being able to find an easy way to tell you um, that there's these little complications other than we have neighborhood talks and that's it. And, and somehow it's, those neighborhood talks aren't getting data to you guys because it's affecting the whole thing. <coughs> so that's all, but okay. you guys have done a lot of good work. So that's the point that we're trying to say, like you said, it's, it's um, you have to start balancing out and working a little bit until you weed out the little complications and she's been doing a great job, that's all. 
We appreciate that, and there are various avenues of being able to submit those concerns to us. You can utilize our website. Amanda, it usually goes through her her department. So yeah, we'll definitely, if you want to touch base with her, you can have my card. Uh, there's several ways to contact us, and please let us know, because if we don't see it and don't know about it, we, we can't fix it, but I do appreciate and it. And podcast questions? As oh yes, well. we do a podcast. Unfortunately, I've been on it a few times, but uh, <laughs> it is something that's done that we, you know our town manager does on a weekly basis. So we always have those type of things, and that's what we enjoy having those questions and discussing what some of the issues and concerns of the community are. Yes, ma'am. So if we can get everyone to vote yes when this is on the ballot, then it happens, right? You were Correct. talking about. It, it is a voter approved initiative. So yes, there's a, you know, and it not only impacts the town of Miranda, it's the region. So if you're familiar, there's a current RTA that we're currently sitting through and you had asked about the tax. That is something that's already being assessed that you pay for when you buy your goods and services. And that is going towards these type of projects. That went towards Tangerine that was constructed here from Dove Mountain going east. That went towards Twin Peaks, that went towards Ina. So we were able to accomplish big things with that initiative, and we're not the only one. The other agencies are also able to, to benefit from that. If it doesn't, uh, you know, if it's not successful, then we will have to look at other opportunities, and we will. But that's just something I want to point out that, that the RTNX is something to be aware of. Yes, sir. Uh, are you uh, lobbying our, your Congress and uh, senators of this place uh, to get some of this federal dollars? So the 10 million we received from the state was from that. It was actually our legislators that placed it on the state budget. So that's where we received the 10 million. Now in regards to federal funding, you receive that through these grant type initiatives and that's what we're pursuing, the available grants that are out there. But it doesn't look like the, there's a lot of funding uh, from that in, uh, in comparison to what everybody is gonna be paying in tax. There's, there's, Sir, that's a question that I'm not able to answer, but there is a lot of funding available, but there's also very competitive. So, so and I don't know how the overall trillion dollar bill is broken up, but there's to all elements of transportation and all aspects. So there's funding that we are pursuing. Yes, sir. Uh, guy in the, sorry, the guy in the yeah, I, I think it's very evident that the current president passed an, a bipartisan infrastructure bill and that millions and millions of dollars are flowing into various communities. They're not just giving it out. You have to go through proper channels and ask for it. But what I would suggest to everybody here is take a look at voting records of your congressman in Legislative District 17 and see if he voted for the infrastructure bill or not. And if he did not vote for somebody else, it's the same thing with your senators, <coughs> it's the same thing with your state senator and your state representatives. There is a clear divide between who votes for infrastructure and who does not vote for infrastructure. So in this case, it's definitely <coughs> an investment into our community and it makes our life better. Yes, ma'am. So, I'm not involved with most of these people in here, but being in my 50 town, I've been coming here for year after year after year, visiting our campus past last year. So, for 35 years, I've heard and I've seen that Tangerine has slowly been built and improved. It hasn't gone all the way to the freeway. Um, I see what you have done. It is way different than what I grew up with in Southern California, and I love California for its weather. Everything else is a little crazy. So that's why we moved here. Um, so I can't say that California is the best, because it's not. Um, I can't say that Arizona is the best, because I haven't seen it yet. But I know there's a lot of things between the two that have really greatly improved, but you know the way that you've done the overpass is for the freeway, you don't see that in California. You see it just strictly for the massive interchanges, but not like here. So the whole thing with uh, Prince and Ina and Rudrak and Twin Peaks, I would have expected that by now with Chandler. 
and it hasn't even happened for 35 plus years. Why is it taking that long just to get these quickly overpasses done? And if we're looking at a half cent increase for an extension of this, and you're talking about 200 million being raised every year, is it going to continue to go for our freeways or is it going to continue to go to everything else on the surface region? So ma'am, you're asking a question that's honestly from the state level to uh, answer. So not to get into, you know, <laughs> into their jurisdiction and discuss, but part of that is they do look at needs and they look at also traffic generation. And I'll be honest, uh, unfortunate for us, Miranda is booming, but we weren't booming until relatively recently. And that's what's really, you know, highlighted the need for these. And that's why we're really having those discussions with ADOT and saying, look, we are growing. We're growing one of the fastest communities in the state you know, top three, depending on which article you read. But So they understand that now, they are coming to the table, but for years they had needs elsewhere because they're looking at a state system. So I can't explain exactly, like, you know, if you ask me, yeah, I think it'd be great if we had it in place, I'd appreciate it. It'd make my job easier. But they have to look at it from a statewide perspective. And they have not only the interstate, they have I-10, I-8, but they have several highways. So when they're looking at that and figuring out where they need to divvy their money, because we all have, you know, funding is a finite resources. I'm, I get that. I get their argument. I get where they're at. But also we're arguing now that, hey, we get that where we were before, but now Miranda is booming and we have these problems and we're trying to get in front of them before we're coming back to tell you that, hey, we're going to do this. And you're saying, well, why didn't you do it five years ago? We are actively having those discussions. But to answer your question, again, I'm not going to speak for ADOT, but I'm, I do know that they have to look at an entire state system when they talk about funds and projects. So with that half cent that I was asking about, if you're continuing that, if you're wanting to put on the ballot to continue again or to continue these uh, interchanges, are you truly going to be using that to reward these interchanges or is it still going throughout the whole community? That is a half cent sales tax for the region. So it's not only ADOT, it's ourselves, it's Oro Valley, Tucson, so it's all of the, the cities and jurisdictions, Pima County, so no, that will not all go towards the interstate because that's going towards their issues and their items that they have. In our case, if we had a roadway in particular, like Tangerine Road, that was part of that. Now our major needs that we've identified is actually not even our infrastructure, it's the states, but those are our needs because that's gonna help us as we continue to grow. But that half cent is spread across Pima County region. That is not dedicated to ADOT. Yes, sir. Yeah, you might point out for everybody that this, this particular interchange was not Miranda's first rodeo with a railroad overcrossing. That Miranda has had experience initially with Twin Peaks and the Niner Road. Both those projects, you faced the same challenges all the way through the design before you actually went to construction. And that the funding took care of itself down the road, but your main objective was to try to identify the project, what it is that you're trying to build so that you're arrive at price. Is that not correct? Yeah, that is correct. We are at the very, again, I, I can't emphasize it enough. We are at the infant stages of this. We yeah, are yeah. doing our best to make sure that it's, we do every step we can to be ready to construct yeah. when that timing comes. It's a little bit of a change though, because actually now we understand that the design's changed a bit where the columns that support the bridge can no longer be within the railroad right of way. So that's a 200 foot span that's obviously a little bit more engineering than previously. So just nuances, but yes, we've been through this rodeo a few times and we're trying to get through it again. One other question, you said they had a member of traffic here from Marana. Are you familiar with the traffic count, daily traffic counts are, Cortero? Dion can correct me, but I think the last numbers I saw put it close to 20,000, at least on the east side. On the west side, it was 21. It was around those numbers. I remember it was a high 19 to 20,000. So um, how about Iron Road? That I don't, I don't know. I've been looking at Cortero a lot lately, <laughs> but I haven't looked at Iron for a while. Right. How about Tangerine Road? Sir, I'm not going to be able to answer any other question <laughs> on those right now off the top of my head. Probably considerably less. Well, yeah, Tangerine is considerably less right now. However, you know, we have some big projects that could take off at any point yeah. that are you know, you see there's active work going on out there. No homes have been placed. There's still a little ways from that. So yes. we're just trying to get in front of it. But you're, you bring up a point of, yes, 
The current, the existing traffic, Ina had considerable traffic, Cortero has considerable traffic. When you look at where Tangerine currently sits and the amount of traffic generated, it is not as high. Now, yes, we are getting a lot of build out on Gladden. So on the west side, there is considerable traffic and there's gonna be more. The east side just hasn't hit that same elevation yet as far as traffic going, but we're, we're getting closer and closer. Isn't Tangerine a designated state highway? No. At one point, it was identified as a potential state highway, but that was dropped off. I can't remember how long ago, but it's years ago as they dropped that off. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a cost for the construction at, uh, at uh, Ina? I do, but Ina Construction One today's dollars are considerably higher especially even three years ago. Just like all of us pay a lot more for commodities that we buy day in and day out, you know, at the, at the restaurant, at the grocery store, you name it, um, there's been a substantial increase. The other thing is when we did INA, that was paid off through the partnership with the state, with the RTA, but there was also the, we did the bridge, you know, we reconstructed INA as part of that project, and we did the bridge over the Santa Cruz. I want to say that Ina was in the 80 million to maybe 80 to 100 million dollar range. I think the total project was close to 125, 130, with about 30 million or so going to the bridge element and the reconstruction of Ina. So around that range. But again, dollars, the price point has changed considerably even in the last three years. Yeah, that's my point. So do you think uh, 200 million? You're asking for 200 million, you think that's enough with the inflation uh, figured in over the next 10 years? I think it puts us in a good strong place. I'll, I'll be honest, we've seen a little bit of reprieve as far as like we're starting to see bids come in and actually come within a price point that we consider considered like more normalized, if you will. Um, a lot of it was tied to the pandemic. A lot of it is still, we're seeing material shortages, a little bit harder to get those. Um, you know, there's a couple other things that we're all aware of that's going on out there that could have impacts that I, I can't tell you how that's going to change the environment in the next few years. You know, there's a few wars going on now that are, all of those global things impact, especially when you're talking about projects like this that use a lot of resources. So, but I think the 200 million, I know Heidi just recently did like a pretty deep dive into the estimate with the engineer. And I think they came up around 195 to 200. So I think we're still there. You know, if it extends beyond a five year, it, it's hard to say. But would you be using any of the uh, contractors that were used uh, on the uh, Eno Road bridge? It would go through the federal process and it would go through a bid process and, or it would go through some, you know, a procurement process that's laid out. So to answer who would be the contractor, I don't know. It's potential that it could be one of those players because those are large contractors and they, they do this type of infrastructure. And how many jobs would, would be created, roughly? I, that I, I don't have an answer. Well, I think uh, the number of jobs being created might be, a, <clears throat> might be something to use to help get the 200 million in the area. Well, I think when one winds down, the other one starts up. So those people aren't losing their jobs. They're just moving down the road, right? So I'm not sure if you're talking about construction jobs or if you're talking about jobs in general. And construction considering. jobs. So yeah, I mean, the intent is when you know, we would build this infrastructure and then there could potentially be a lot of infrastructure being built at this time frame. Again, getting back to the RTA initiative. Uh, we're not the only ones asking for funding and have projects on the books. There's quite a few out there. Yes, sir. Uh, just out of curiosity, when when uh, they put in that third lane on either side of Cortero underneath I-10, who paid for that one? Was it RTA uh, project or was that the Town of Morana project? That was a Town of Morana project, is my understanding, and that was done back in uh, mid-2000s. I want to say around 2005 when that lane was placed, that abutment treatment, and that's similar to what we're looking at with Tangerine. And again, that's a project that the town is funding. So I just want to let everybody here know, because I know you're going to drive through there and see that that is, the intent of that is to, is to be a stopgap until we get to an ultimate 
overpass, but it's improving the situation as best we can with the funding availability and to allow more throughput through that area until we get to the point where we can actually do a full blown TI. Yes, sir. I have a question, not quite on this, but about Cortero. So you're coming down Cortero, make a left hand turn to go parallel to I 10, you're going toward Twin Peaks. Okay, I don't know what direction that is. That light usually lets three cars through the left hand turn signal and then it goes back to red and there's a huge backup and a long way to make a left hand turn. Can those lights be resynchronized to improve the traffic flow there? So that is not our lights that we control, that is an ADOT light, but I know our traffic manager has a contact with ADOT and she will pass along the concerns that we get. So okay. we do work with them closely, but yeah, when I mentioned that the traffic interchange is ADOTs, that also includes the traffic signals and the frontage road and all those intersections. Okay. So we do not directly control those. However, we do have a relationship with ADOT. Uh, so just to mention, just to ping on this gentleman's uh, comment, uh, to me, the same thing. I avoid the Cotero one whenever I use some of the businesses. I go to Ina, so I can just buzz via bypass and sleep You through. do a UE. Yeah. yeah. So you bring up an excellent point. I myself will sometimes go to Walmart and I'll do a loop around if I'm heading north and go over to Twin Peaks just to avoid that. And sometimes I drive through it because, you know, all the worst director, I want to drive through our roads and, you know, our partner's roads and, and sit through it if I have to. But you bring up the point of that's the situation we're in when this is taken out of play. We do that reconstruction couple things most people don't enjoy going through construction zones so most people will avoid it but we do have opportunities you brought up one you can take a right you can go south you can do a big u-turn if you will or you can also do like i mentioned and go torchero to twin peaks and then go our silver bill twin peaks and then utilize that ti so that is move those are movements that we see today that people do utilize and that also highlights that obviously we'd like to improve the situation so you don't have to do that but until we get to that point or if when we're under construction we do have alternative options that can be utilized yes sir due to the proximity of these two projects this sounds like it's an all or nothing situation the ti and the rcd have to go together is that correct so Yes, so when we're pursuing, we are actively, I just want to ensure that this outreach is 100% for the RCE grant, but it is tied to the interstate. And we have actually, as part of our research in, in history and looking at other projects, there are some states that have done exactly what we're looking at here. They received an RCE grant, but it was for improvement of a traffic interchange because yes, you're right, they're right there next to each other. You can't go over the railroad, come back down and go over I-10, that's not gonna happen. They're, they're a little bit separated at that point, but not that far. So yes, we are, we are putting all of our efforts, best efforts in pursuing this with the intent to wrap this up into the overall Cortero TI project. I was just asking because there seems to be a confusing delineation on the Sunset Road and I-10 project. They are treated as separate projects, even though they're obviously going together once now. They're being done together, but my understanding is Sunset is placing the bridge on the east side over. I'm not familiar with that one. I apologize. I, members of our team have been part of that process in, in attending those weekly meetings. I, I have not been that yeah, involved. But so, there is a little bit of separation with those projects. One of it is the Orange Grove and then the Sunset. There is a little bit of delineation, so I can see where you're coming from. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am, you're correct. As we're all aware we've had some unfortunate incidences within the last couple of weeks that were conflicts between vehicles and the railroad. So yes, it helps them because it completely eliminates that altogether. There will be no vehicular railroad conflicting movements anymore. That, that won't happen because now there will be a bridge going over them. And it also, there's many beneficial aspects to it. A lot of it is, we mentioned, as Heidi pointed out, 
with some of her slides, there's the multimodal aspect. There's the people that ride bikes, there's the people that walk, there's the people that are ADA that want to get from one side of the interstate to the other and across the railroad. Again, I have to keep coming back and make sure you, this is for the railroad, but the projects are intermingled. But it also, there's a just, you know, when all of this is done and through the pain, painful aspects of it, it's going to put all the businesses in a lot better situation. It's going to, because businesses, they want two things for sure. They want their clients to definitely get there easily, hopefully, and also, you know, to be able to leave without too much hassle so that they come back. So this will help the traffic circulation in the area. Yes, sir. So you said that ease of traffic get the businesses there. Like that McDonald's and Burger King's there, if you look at the way uh, Cliff Peaks and Ryan has built, won't that, the incline and decline those pass that? They're not. How will that work? So there's very, again, we're talking about very preliminary design that were done with part of the concept. Shifting that does impact the Burger King, but as we become aware, Burger King is actually changing their whole corporate, like they've closed down a ton of Burger Kings just because they're going a completely different direction. We found out recently, or within the last few months, the one at Home Depot shut down, which we were not aware of. thought they had another fire. They had two. Yeah, no, I think they, <laughs> so from what I've seen, because I've seen some articles recently, Burger King is doing a whole different, uh, they're going a different direction. But that is one of the areas that, will potentially be impacted by this. But the other things that have come about as we look at some of the concepts that we've seen that are out there, design standards have been updated where some of the angles of approach and uh, as you leave the structure can be uh, further uh, increased from what was preliminary designed or originally designed. So a lot of those things, I guess to say it short, we're looking at minimizing overall impacts. But there will be some. There's some property that will come into, that will be in that area that you know, maybe we have to look into some type of property. You know, I don't know, some, sorry. This railroad grant that you're making application to for this project, was it available on the Iron Road project and the Twin Peaks and did you apply for it on those projects? I don't know if it was available at those times, and no, we did not apply for it at those times. Um, the town has traditionally not, I didn't say, we haven't pursued federal funding excessively in the past. With federal funds, there's a lot of other items tied to it. There's a lot of uh, processes in place, and there's also the fact that the town is not a large enough agency to self-administer. What that means is we get federal funding they can't hand us the money and we run with the project. We have to partner up with a larger agency that can do so. So in our case, it would most likely be like an ADOT. They can do that. There's other uh, avenues in place where ADOT can say, well, we'll let you run with the design portion of it. But that's discussions that are, you know, we're still years away from that. But no, so traditionally to, to pursue federal fundings triggers a lot of extra work, if you will, that are tied to it, that we are not in the best position to be able to do so. But now that we're talking about projects of this magnitude and these dollar amounts, we are actively looking at those avenues now. So. Yes, sir. Okay, so to repeat, uh, the timeline for this project, if you get on what, FY27? Sir, I, I don't, I did not give a timeline. I just gave, as you mentioned with your question, I gave a lot of like probabilities or what we're looking at. We are very, very, very in front of the project as far as construction, all of that, very infantile at this point. There's a lot of things you have to do before you get to that point. So we are trying to pursue funds so that we can have the planning processes, the environmental aspects, and hopefully design in place. If everything were to land ideally, and if RTA next were to move forward, we could potentially be in the first period of that program. The other thing is, is RTA is still looking at all the projects and the funding availability and seeing where some of these projects are gonna land within the overall RTA. We have asked that Corchero be placed in the first period. I can't tell you with any certainty that that will be placed in the first period. That is our ask, that is our number one, followed by Tangerine. So if that were to be placed in the first period, we're gonna do everything we can to move into construction in that first period of that program. Yes, sir. 
if funding is successful and you're able to proceed on your design plan, at some point will you come back to the community and have similar meetings showing the impact, what it will look like on the To be honest with you, sir, we're probably gonna come back to you a couple of different times and tell you where we're at in the process and if we've gotten, if we're successful with pursuing the grant, we achieve that. Once we get into the stages of doing design, so you're probably gonna get tired of seeing us before we even get to the construction. But yes, we will come back and we will let you know where we're at and we will show you at that point, we'll be able to put those exhibits up here and tell you here's what it's looking like, here's what the layout's gonna look like, here's what potential right of way or property impacts, things like that. So, you know, I guess land acquisition would be what I was trying to come up with earlier. In the frame. But so those type of elements, yes, once we get further along, we'll definitely be back. And not only here, we're gonna be meeting with groups throughout the town. Thank you. And how will we be no, uh, notified about, you know, let's say, the next status meeting, you know, through an email, we signed a form now? I'm guessing through however you, uh, are you talking about like more immediate, or are we talking about like, what are you In the doing? future, you know, like you said, the well, next steps. This website right here, and please, if, if you didn't hear earlier, please go to that website, because we do have a survey and that survey not only will A, let you have more engagement with us and fill out some questionnaires and let us know what you're thinking, but B, that will also help hopefully make us successful as we pursue this grant because we're gonna be able to show that look, we've had these community meetings and we've also have a survey and this is the feedback we're receiving. So all of that plays into it, so please go to that. But you'll have this survey that will, or this website that will keep you up to date on what we're currently doing. And then in the future, when we get to that point, uh, you know, right now we have all modes of, you know, social media, we have podcasts, but by the time this comes in play, I don't know, who knows what we'll have by that point. I believe, AI. <laughs> I know. I believe we have our calendar too on the website, so we list all these meetings on our calendar if we go to moranaaz.gov. And our newsroom. And I believe with this, we also, I, I think it hit you guys' as HOA yes. or I believe that outreach was also done, so yes. we do those type of outreach as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just going to say, I didn't know about the meeting until, until earlier this morning when I was watching Channel 13 News. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's good to know because we also did, uh, you know, I had a couple interviews with KOLD, so we, we were utilizing all resources. But yeah, I thought that this was also passed along to your HOA, so I know a lot of us get newsletters and don't look at them, but if you take a quick skim through and you see Portero, give it a quick read. I think we're pretty good, so yeah, unfortunately we have some other meetings to get to, so with that, I thank everybody.